Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together 20 of my best fall Dollar Tree DIYs. In today's video, I have a little bit of everything and for about every kind of fall decor you want to do for your home. We're gonna take one of the little foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and do something really cute. So I always like the white ones. I always try to pick up the white ones because especially if you're gonna cover it with like burlap or something with holes in it, you're gonna be able to see that through. So the first thing I do is just take the little stem off the foam pumpkin and pop a hole in the top. And then this is just an extra piece of burlap from the Dollar Tree that I had that I have already ironed. And um, I am gonna go ahead and just do one corner using my scissors to kind of pull that down inside the pumpkin. I always like to try to cut off the excess material, but I went all the way across, grabbed the corner, and I'm gonna press that in there too. And then um, these two side pieces are a little bit trickier because you wanna kind of try to get them as tight as you can before you do the last piece here. Again, I'm gonna trim off the excess fabric and just trying to pull that as tight up against the pumpkin as I can so I don't have any, like a lot of excess fabric like sticking out, kind of messing with the shape of the pumpkin. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I kind of tuck the side pieces first, gather it all together, trim off any excess material, kind of gather it as tight as I can, and then just shove all that fabric down inside of the pumpkin. And I had a really fun idea what to do with this little burlap pumpkin today. I thought it'd be really fun to decorate it with mushrooms. I love decorating with mushrooms, especially for fall. I think it's so cute. So I thought we could top the burlap pumpkin with a little mushroom scene. So I'm just trying to get that as tight as I possibly can um, and until I'm happy with it. Now I do wanna leave like the whole side up. That's gonna be a place for my pumpkin stem. And I kinda of wanted to do something bigger um, than the little wood sticks from the Dollar Tree. So I'm using the wood stems. They come in all different shapes and sizes. And I just pick out one with a lot of bark, kinda of curves a little bit. That I think should be a good pumpkin stem. Just trying to figure out which way I want it. And you can kind of shove it down inside your hole. That's also going to cinch the material and make it tighter. Um, I'm also going to use a little hot glue to help reinforce it before I kind of force it down in there. But I wasn't going to do a pumpkin stem on this because I have plans to decorate the top of it. But I really think every pumpkin needs a pumpkin stem. It's really going to kind of spell out what it is that it's a pumpkin. Now to top it, I kind of wanted like a forest floor scene of mushrooms. So I'm gonna use some of this brown moss from the Dollar Tree. I find that the, this stuff is messier than any of the other mosses that I've used from the Dollar Tree, like reindeer moss and stuff like that. But I really enjoy this brown color when it comes to fall decor. It really kind of looks like the color of like leaf litter, like on a forest floor. So I just work one section at a time and I'm going to try to hot glue that all down. I definitely want to try to hot glue it in place so it doesn't fall off because as you can see, it's a little messy for sure. And I just keep working around until I have a nice space where I can put some little mushrooms for fall. And I have some plans to do some more mushroom DIYs this week. I'm thinking about doing a mushroom tear tray for Halloween. I think that sounds kind of fun. My son was like, do it, do it, spooky mushrooms. <laughs> so we will see. So that looks good. So I think we're ready for the mushrooms. Now these are from the Dollar Tree. You get eight of these adorable little wooden mushrooms. And I thought we could paint them. I think we're gonna do a total of five of these. I think that's gonna be plenty. So I start with just some of the ivory um, acrylic and what I'm doing is just painting the stem and the underside of the um, all of them this color. And then I can go back and color the tops. 
I'm going to mix it up and do like different colors, but I want all of the stems and underside of all five of them just to be ivory. Now I'm going to do two of them in blue. So what I did was mix some of that cloudless together with ivory for a super light blue color. Kind of goes with that neutral fall decor really well. And we are going to do two of the mushrooms in that light blue color. And then we're going to do the other three in just ivory, just to kind of keep them simple. I don't want anything too colorful going on on this one. I want to stay with the neutral colors. And one thing I like by little tossing in the little blue here and there, it's going to make it go with the rest of the coastal decor and the colors in my home. Now I use the end of the paintbrush and dip that in paint to do some very simple little polka dots on the top of the blue mushroom. Super cute little spotted mushroom. I won't need to do that with the ivory, just the two blue ones. And I find that the tip of a skinny um, paintbrush from the Dollar Tree like this works great for little polka dots. Now let's attach these to our moss. They are just the right size for this size pumpkin. And I'm just gonna kind of scatter them around. I don't want it to be too symmetrical. I kind of want to mix up the blues a little bit because I only have two of those. And I'm just gluing those flat on the top of the pumpkin, kind of pushing them down inside the moss a little bit. So it kind of comes up a little bit on the sides of the mushrooms. And I'm so glad I decided to make this pumpkin. I think it turned out so cute. I really enjoy the mushrooms for sure. So as you can see, I didn't do it symmetrical on purpose because I wanted it to kind of look random, like mushrooms would be growing. And then I'm going to fill it in with a little bit more moss. And I really love the idea of decorating with mushrooms for fall. I think it's really cute. And we actually do have mushrooms here in Florida right now, if I think about it. So pretty simple to do. Um, I've been having a little bit of trouble finding the foam pumpkins in my stores, but I don't think they have all their fall and Halloween out quite yet. They still have a lot of school supplies in my stores. But this is how the mushroom pumpkin turned out. I think it's so cute. I love the little pops of blue because I always enjoy decorating with that color for fall, but I really like how it turned out, especially the little burlap pumpkin there. I hope you enjoyed this first DIY, and I have tons more fall DIYs coming right up. Okay, for our next DIY, we're going to use one of these little wood pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. Pretty standard. They seem to have these every year at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to remove the hanger and the little raffia bow that's on there. I do make sure I get all the hot glue off because I want to stain the back pumpkin there. And I'm going to use the same uh, mixture that I used for the planter box. Just water mixed with Antique Wax by Waverly to give me this lighter stain. And then I'm just going to go over the whole pumpkin and stain it that color. Now, this is going to be a decoupage um, pumpkin. And so I want to decoupage on the little sections that kind of stick up on the pumpkin. So I am just painting them ivory. And we're going to use those really beautiful fall napkins they have at the Dollar Tree this year. And I thought that we could put that pumpkin and sunflower design on the white parts of the pumpkin. So I'm trying not to get ivory on my stain parts, but if I do, it's not that big of a deal. It's easy to wipe it right off there with a little baby wipe. And here is our beautiful napkin. I also use this napkin to decoupage a sign for my coffee bar. If you haven't seen my coffee bar video, it came out last week. Um, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. I know a lot of people are really busy right now, but like my last five videos are just not performing at all. So check my channel, see if you've missed any videos because I have put out a lot of content. Um, just not getting a lot of views there. So all I did was separate the second ply from the napkin, always good to do if you're doing decoupage. And then I'm kind of cutting along the first section, the middle section of the pumpkin, where I would need that to be. I'm gonna save the side parts because we'll use those for the side parts of the pumpkin. 
and then um, just cut it down to size. Now the parts that are going to be on the pumpkin that are going to be exposed, I just ripped the edges just to make that blend in. And it's okay if I didn't get it cut perfect because we can um, fix this up in just a minute. I'm just putting a thin coat of Mod Podge down and then with dry fingers, just smoothing that napkin on. It's such a beautiful design. I give that a nice dry with my heat gun and then I go back in there with uh, my finger sander to kind of get in there, sand that off a perfect cut all the way around the sections of our little pumpkin. And I wanna continue this pattern um, on the napkin, on the other sections. So I'm gonna kind of line those up and hope that the arch pretty much works for the cut that we're gonna have there. And again, any of the areas that are gonna be exposed like on the top and the side over here, I'm just gonna rip those. You can always get that wet to rip too if you wanna make sure you don't rip your image, but it was a very little um, area that I had to rip, so it was pretty easy. And then again, I just put a thin coat of Mod Podge down and lay the napkin on there, right? where it'll kind of cover everything and it'll make it look like that sunflower and pumpkin pattern continue and then just sand off the excess. I love decoupage. I love decorating with like window decals from the Dollar Tree, but I always love the feel of decorating with decoupage with the napkins. It has such a beautiful texture and it just looks so good. You don't get any of that sheen or shine with it either. So once I get it on there and dry, I did go over it again with a little bit of Mod Podge. And now it's time to decorate the top. I'm gonna use this great pumpkin and like burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna kind of do just like a bow back, not necessarily an entire bow. So I just cut down like a little, like maybe five inch, six inch portion of that. I'm just gonna use some twine to make a new hanger for our pumpkin. And then I just take my ribbon and I'm gonna fold it lengthways and then just dovetail the ends like you would have on a bow. And then I'm just going to kind of cinch that up and kind of have that peek out behind because I wanna decorate this with a sunflower and not necessarily a big bow. So I just kind of scrunch it all together, making a very easy little bow here by using a zip tie, pulling it tight, and kind of pushing out the edges. It does have a wire on there, so it keeps its shape pretty well. And then I just hot glue the little zip tie to the top of our pumpkin. And it's gonna give us that little bow feel up there without an entire bow sticking out. Super sweet, and I think the colors work well. I still have a sunflower left here from that floral pick, so I'm just going to use that at the top. And then it also had some leaves left over on that little fall floral. So you know what, let's use those as well. And we'll kind of do a similar style that is on the napkin by gluing those to the sign and then gluing the little sunflower up here to decorate our bow. Now, when I was looking at my fall floral, I did still have some greenery on there and I thought that would even add to it more. So I might as well use it if I have it. So I'm gonna use like the little green sprigs that were on the fall floral as well. And we can kind of have those kind of cascading down the front of the pumpkin. And so it's just a matter of hot gluing those between the sunflower and the bow. I'm gonna do two on each side and this DIY is complete. This pumpkin's not really very big. You could layer this on another sign if you'd like a bigger sign, but I think it turned out so cute. It was so easy to make with just a $1.25 sign and a napkin. Look how cute it is. I really love the combination of the sunflower and the pumpkins. So adorable for fall. And using decoupage with that Dollar Tree napkin was so easy to do one of these little panel pumpkins like this. I really love how it turned out. I think it's so pretty. And uh, let me give you a wide view of the pumpkin. Adorable. Hey guys, are you enjoying today's video? If you are, be sure to hit that like button. It always helps my videos do a little bit better here on YouTube. And now on to the next one. I wanted to try to find a fun, creative way to cover one of these pumpkin wreath forms from Dollar Tree. I've done several different things with these, and this is probably the easiest thing I've ever done with one of these. 
I'm going to take the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start on the middle section right here and I'm just trying to figure out kind of the angle I want that to be at. But what I'm going to do is start the burlap roll there on the back of the stem by just gluing the metal frame down to the ribbon. And my plan was to like zigzag wrap um, two of them together with the burlap ribbon and then kind of work it in kind of like macrame but with this large burlap and you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. So I left all of my burlap on the roll. It makes it a little bit easier that way. Just making sure that this is good and dry so that I can kind of tug on it and pull it tight. And as you can see, I kind of go down diagonally back and forth until I cover that section of the pumpkin. I'm going to pull this through and then I'm going to do each individual section of the pumpkin separately. I found that it was easier just to cut it and to glue it. Now here on the bottom, it worked out really well because it glued over the wire. And so you won't be able to see that. But there's some other areas like on the top. Um, the way that it's set up, I'm going to have to go back and cover that up. But my plan is to cover up all of the metal wire. So I don't really care that it's that like dark color because you're not going to be able to see it in the end. So I'm going to start my next row um, right here to the left just by gluing that under. And then I'm going to go through that same area we were just in and see how we're going to zigzag back and forth by pulling the burlap roll through and that is going to cover up all of the wire. So that was my plan was to try to get it all covered up and something really simple, but it gives like a really cool vibe to this pumpkin. I've done like the wood beads. I've seen people do fabric and stuff like that. And I've done macrame on these. And uh, this is definitely a fun technique. So I definitely recommend it. Now I got the first two done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one over here, kind of working from the inside out. And again, I just zigzag that through, covering up the hole and then kind of ending it on the back on the top. And I just hot glue that in place and then just trim the burlap down. If it doesn't sit flat, I just come back here and fold off the bottom to make it flatter because it's a little wide for the base. So we're just gonna keep doing that until we cover the entire pumpkin. Again, just working inside to out so I know exactly where my roll needs to be. And I'm pulling it through tight, but not real tight, just a little bit of play so that I can kind of move it around a little bit when it comes to the next row. Now, if you wanted to do two of these and put them back to back, you can make a really cool centerpiece. I have done that with a macrame, with two of them with macrame. Um, but I'm going to make this for a door hanging. And the thing I love about this pumpkin wreath from the Dollar Tree is that it is so large. Like this is really a significant piece. So we have almost everything covered. We just have the two um, side pieces and we're going to kind of do the same thing on those. Um, you do have to kind of just kind of guess your angles here and I'm just going to kind of wrap it around. I can always go back and tighten the bottom there where it's not setting like real circular or close. I just trim the burlap down and kind of glue that to itself. And basically I want to cover up all of the wire. Um, I don't want any of that to be visible. And as you can see, the burlap ribbon is doing a really good job. So I'm going to do the same thing over here on the left. And then I just can need to kind of go back and cover all the wire around the edges and the top where you can still see that. But the bottom is all covered. So that worked out well. So you kind of have to be creative here on the sides, um, kind of play with it and see what's going to work. I just kind of wrapped mine around and glued it to it. And we're just going to cover up this little section here on the side that doesn't really have anything, just kind of one section at a time. I just trim that and kind of hot glue that in place. And then I can trim it and kind of wrap it around 
Really no rhyme or reason. Um, I just want to cover up the wire. I guess you could always use rope or something like that too if you wanted to frame yours out with rope, but I really wanted to just kind of stick to the burlap. Now um, it's time to kind of do the same thing here on the top. I was just trying to figure out what would be the best way to do this. And so I just like glue it to the back, glue it down, and then I'm also trying to glue it over the area there at the top of the pumpkin stem. And I just kind of make that work. And I really don't want all this excess burlap on the back either. So I'm just going to trim that as I go. And here is another section on the top that really kind of needs something. So I just kind of glue that on there. I don't want to overlap our design on the front too much. And then I just keep doing that all the way around. Over here on the side, I just really needed a small piece. And so I just glued that around until all of the wires covered except for the pumpkin stem. And my plan is to do something different with that just to bring in a little bit more color. But we are still gonna have the burlap. One more little hole right down here. And isn't that like a cool way to cover it? I think it looks really cool. And it was so easy. It was probably the fastest way I've ever done one of these little pumpkin reefs. Now for the pumpkin stem, I thought we used some of the Dollar Tree white nautical rope. This is the six foot. And um, I'm going to need like two or three rows to make it wide enough to make a pumpkin stem. So I'm just going to kind of put those side by side. Starting over here on the left side of the stem, I'm going to go ahead and just hot glue that right directly onto the wire. And then I'm going to make it longer so it'll kind of like curl off to the side because this is a really large pumpkin. It really needs a large pumpkin stem. The next piece, I just kind of glue it to the piece next to it because it really didn't have a lot to glue to. And then the third piece I can glue over to the right side of the wire just cutting all three of those ropes down to size. Then I'm just gonna glue them side to side here at the top so they'll all be attached to each other. And I want it to look like a large pumpkin stem. So I kind of glue it where it kind of like twists and turns a little bit too, but nothing too crazy. And I think that looks pretty cool. I'm glad that it's a different color than the burlap. It's gonna break up the color in that a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and make a hanger. I probably should have done this before because I've kind of got everything glued up. <laughs> so that's okay. I just take some twine and I tie a knot and I'm just going to glue that to the back. This is very lightweight. That burlap was very lightweight. So there's really not a lot to this. This would be great for a door because it's so lightweight. You're not going to have a, a like a heavy banging thing on your door when you're opening it and shutting it. So that is solved. We have a hanger on it. Then I thought it'd be fun to add a fall word. These are those little galvanized metal words from the Dollar Tree. And since I'm going to do mine on my front door, I thought welcome would be really cute. So I'm just going to kind of center that on the front of the pumpkin. Um, I'm going to let it be flat, um, just gluing it in place in two places here um, to kind of glue it against the two wire pieces sticking up. But I'm not going to wrap it around or anything like that. Now to decorate the top of the pumpkin, I thought it would be fun to use some of these little burlap leaves from the Dollar Tree. These come in like the tan and the white burlap. They also come in two different sizes. So since we've already done the brown burlap, I thought it would be cute to do some leaves with the white burlap. It's going to go really nicely with the rope up here. And I can also kind of cover up the end of the rope there. I don't really need that to look all gnarly down there like I kind of want it to at the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these leaves in place. I am going to add to that and add some more leaves to it here in just a minute. Now, no blue on this DIY, just a lot of burlap and textures and fun, very neutral. That's when I was like, you know what, I really should have painted the welcome word because you really could not read the galvanized metal against the burlap. It just didn't stand out at all. So I'm going to try painting these, even though it is a little bit difficult. So the first thing I do is go over the whole thing with Mod Podge. 
I guess the secret to that is it just kind of helps the paint to stick to the metal a little bit because it's hard to paint these because they like to scratch and stuff like that. But I'm just going to still need a couple of coats. So I'm doing that antique parchment, ivory color, acrylic, and just going over this until I cover um, all the metal. It likes to kind of, you know, peek through a little bit looking like a metal distress. So I try to get it as good as I can. And I switched to a brush. I found that the brush worked a little bit better for getting coverage on that because again, it's a little tricky to paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and reattach it to our pumpkin just like we had before. And I think that looks so much better. You can totally read it now. We have a nice contrast and it goes with all the ivory that we used at the top of the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna glue my little L and my M back to those front bars again leaving the word flat i'm not going to have it wrap around the arch of the pumpkin or anything like that i think it looks better like this and then i want some lamb's ear on this project too so this is some of the lamb's ear from dollar tree and the great thing about this is that you can just kind of pull the leaves off and get these individual leaves to work with and there's all different shapes and sizes so i'm going to kind of like nestle those in between the little burlap leaves that we had before until I have, you know, lots of greenery here at the top of our pumpkin. Gives it a little bit of color, a little bit of character, and I love those fuzzy leaves on the lamb's ear. They're my favorite. One more large one over here on the side. And just kind of gluing those all in place that they will lay properly and maybe one more burlap ribbon or leaf <laughs> and this is how it turned out our little welcome burlap pumpkin sign i absolutely love it i had no idea if that technique was going to work but look how cool it turned out and it was really very simple to put together i spent more time i think painting the welcome word and then i did wrapping the entire reef with burlap and then it's kind of a cool pattern, right? I absolutely love those pumpkin wreath forms. I just made one with lamb's ear on one of my recent videos. Okay, for the next DIY, we're gonna do a slatted board pumpkin sign and we're gonna combine it with burlap and some of the Dollar Tree craft wood. I also wanna try out a stencil. So there's a few steps I wanna get started. The first thing I wanna do is just iron out some burlap. This is the burlap from Dollar Tree. And the way they fold it up, I just find that it's so much easier to craft with if you iron it first. It's gonna get rid of all those pesky uh, little creases on there. Now I wanna cover um, a larger sign with burlap and we're just going to create our own sign with some of the craft boards from Dollar Tree. I like putting two of these together. It's real wood. It doesn't bow um, nice. You can see how thick that is and they're pretty square. So I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue on one and butt it up against another one pushing those together and you have a custom made sign. It's a really great size to craft with because it's pretty much a square. And I think that's going to be a great size to put that little slatted pumpkin sign from the Dollar Tree. So once I get this all built and dried, I'm going to go ahead and make a hanger. Um, now, while it's easier, just by taking some Dollar Tree twine, tying a knot on each end. And then I'm just going to staple that with my staple gun to the back of the wood. This wood is so thick, you can totally use a staple gun on it. And we already have got the hanger taken care of. Now, I told you I wanted to cover the front of this sign with burlap, that burlap that we just ironed. And so let me show you how I'm going to do that. Um, this is just a scrap piece of the Dollar Tree burlap. I'm going to put down a nice hefty coat of Mod Podge. And I want it nice and thick because um, gluing the burlap down can be a little bit challenging. So I just lay it on there, smooth it out, making sure it is good and stuck all over. And then I thought to make it easier to cut with no fraying, I probably should up the Mod Podge at least around the edges. And so that is what I do um, to make sure that area, when I cut it, it's not gonna fray and it's gonna give me a nice clean cut. And that worked out really well. Now for the pumpkin, I wanted to do something that would contrast against the burlap. 
and be neutral. And so I decided to make it ivory. And so this is the antique parchment um, acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. And I am just going to do one coat all over the front of this pumpkin. And then we're going to be using some of the Dollar Tree Fall stencils to stencil a design on. So I thought this one would be perfect. It says, Hello Pumpkin. You get two of them in a package for $1.25. So there's also one on there for Thanksgiving. And I'm really loving all the stencils they have for fall. I love these plastic ones more than the stickers, I think. Now I kind of wanted to do like a neutral brown color and I'm going to get that with mixing some antique wax by Waverly with that antique parchment just to give me this nice neutral brown color. And then I am just laying that against my sign. I'm not taping it down or anything. And I just go over all of the words with one of those little stencil daubers from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to do like one good coat on that. I thought we could do the pumpkin in a different color just to give it a little bit of variety. And I also kind of colored in the slat behind if that was going to be part of a letter to make sure that that stays continuous. And then for the pumpkin, I'm just using Cloudless by Apple Barrel, a very soft light blue color. I give it a quick dry with my heat gun and this is how it looks. I did get a little bit of bleeding on the words, but I'm not too concerned about it because my plan was to distress it anyway. So the first thing I do is just go over everything with a sanding sponge. And then I also distress it even more with some more of that antique parchment to kind of break it up. And that really helped the bleeding kind of look like it went more with the distressing. And now this is closer to being dry, but I'm going to help it out a little bit. I wanted to kind of spread out that extra Mod Podge I did around the edges to make sure that that is going to dry clear. And it sure did. And now we can start cutting this out. I'm just going to use like my super sharp fabric scissors and just cut as close as I can to the side of the sign. And this was actually really easy. I can't remember who told me to, I think a couple of you guys told me to dry Mod Podge on there to cut the burlap from Dollar Tree to prevent fraying. And it really works. So thank you. <laughs> so I want to attach the little Hello Pumpkin sign to the front of it. And I'm just going to do that with some hot glue on both of the slats there on the back. Pressing it down and kind of doing it towards the bottom of the sign so I can decorate the top. I wanted to use a lot of lamb's ear today. I'm really excited that Dollar Tree has been carrying lamb's ear. And I think this is great for all seasons. I really like using it for fall decor. I used a lot of it on my tear tray that I did a very similar theme to what we're doing today. Um, the other day, you'll have to see that tear tray. It turned out so beautiful. And I'm just taking some right off the lamb's ear from Dollar Tree. They come in all different shapes and sizes as you can see there and I'm just kind of messing with it until I like it. I also thought one of these little burlap flowers from the Dollar Tree would be cute just to decorate the stem of the pumpkin. And so I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue those in place. And I really love how these colors were together. The flower is kind of a little bit of a surprise on a fall um, DIY, but I really like how it turned out. Now I'm mixing a little of the cloudless with ivory together with a little tiny bit of leaf green, just because I wanted a little bit of a greenish tint to my pumpkin because I'm doing some other DIYs today and I have more of a blue green pumpkin instead of just a blue pumpkin. So I just used a small brush just to kind of update my color a little bit until I was happy with it. And I really think that is all it needs. I like the fact that it has a flower and the lamb's ear at the top instead of like fall leaves. It's a nice surprise. And you guys know I love burlap. Anything with burlap, I think it looks so cute. So once I got my color updated, I just distressed that with the antique parchment as well. So it kind of matches their vibe of everything else. And this fall DIY is complete. So this is how it turned out. We have our little DIY sign back there we covered with burlap with our little slatted Hello Pumpkin sign. I like the colors. I like the surprise of the blue pumpkin. I always like to throw in a little blue here and there if I can. 
But I love kind of the neutral concept of this pumpkin sign. Hey guys, have you checked out my new website yet? It's craftybeach.net. It's an archive of all my YouTube DIYs. You can find the photos that you can pin on Pinterest so you can remember to go back and DIY them. I love a good tray for fall and look at this great tray I found at Target the other day. It was on clearance in their kitchen section for only like $2. It's huge. It's woven. I think it's going to be perfect for fall because it's already got like the great texture and it's going to go great with this theme of natural fall. So I'm going to do this tray for my living room to sit on my coffee table to bring in some fall to my living room. So the first DIY I want to make today is a pine cone scale pumpkin. I thought this would be a fun DIY. So we're going to use a Dollar Tree pumpkin. I picked this one because it was a little bit smaller and I know this is going to be a lot of work <laughs> and I think it'll be good for the tray. Now I got this great pine cone. Funny story, one of my viewers, one of you guys sent me an entire box full of pine cones, acorns. It was amazing. I'm all the way from Oklahoma. So I wanted to give a shout out and a thank you to Paula Jellison. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. That was very thoughtful and these are fantastic to craft with. So thank you. Um, she sent me some really large pine cones like this. And so I'm going to go ahead. It's going to take about one and a half of these um, kind of, you know, pretty big pine cones that she sent me. And I'm just using my heavy duty KitchenAid scissors and snipping off all the scales. Now, last time I made um, a pine cone DIY, I did an acorn top and I kind of pulled them off. Scissors are definitely easier. You might lose a little bit of the scale, but I think it's going to be OK because we're going to overlap those. So I just kept trimming until I couldn't really trim any further. But as you can see, these pine cone, cone scales are nice and large and they're going to make great covering for this pumpkin. So it's kind of messy uh, if you're if you're going to cut one up. This is like how much of the mess is left behind. But let's get started on our pumpkin. So it's kind of a long, tall, skinny pumpkin. So I'm going to start right here at the base where it will kind of like overlap the bottom a little bit and glue that on with the pine cone scale coming down and curved. And I want to kind of do those side by side, um, working my way around, but kind of keeping it level so that it will sit right. I wasn't sure at first if I was going to cover the bottom of the pumpkin or not, but I ended up doing it just to make it look a little bit more professional. And that's what we want to do. We want to cover this entire pumpkin in the pine cone scales. I started out like doing one at a time and then I was like, you know, I can probably do two at a time. My hot glue will stay wet. And that was the case. So that's how it is with one row complete. I did a pretty good job of keeping it fairly level. And then I'm going to go ahead and start working on the next row. Now, ideally, you would kind of nest it down in between the two um, below it. Um, but again, they're all different kind of sizes. So um, that works sometimes, but that was kind of my goal, like starting out. Now, the pumpkin itself is orange. So if I do have like a little crack here and there that shows the original pumpkin through, I'm fine with that because, I mean, it's orange. So it kind of makes sense. But you could always paint it if um, if that bothered you. But just my second row is complete. I just hot glued those all on. Luckily, it fit pretty well. And again, I kind of start staggering them like that, but usually by the time I get going, sometimes they're right on top of each other. But I'm just going to keep building this out. Now, one thing that I noticed from making a pumpkin that was tall and skinny is it doesn't really have like a very traditional pumpkin shape in the end, but I think you can still tell that it's a pumpkin. I hope you can still tell that it's a pumpkin. And as you can see, it is very time consuming to do this, but the end result is so beautiful and you're going to have a piece that you can keep um, just definitely a work of art. So that's about three. I think it took me like real time 
Um, it might have taken me almost an hour to put this together. So take your time. One thing that I was really proud of, though, is I did not burn myself with my hot glue once. <laughs> my hot glue gun. So I did a good job. Now, if you're paying attention to my glue gun drama, I did send back my second um, Ryobi, the little cordless glue gun that I was testing out for you guys. Like the first one, um, the glue stick kept getting stuck in it. So I sent that back and they replaced it um, with Amazon replaced it. And the new one wouldn't charge right. So when I went to send it back, they didn't offer me a replacement. They only offered me a refund. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I think I'll get another one of the Ryobi, the big glue guns that I already have. Mine is kind of wore out, so I could probably use a new one. I'm just using my Sure Bonder here. Um, I don't really like one that plugs in. I really like the cordless, but then you always have the batteries too. So that's how far one pine cone covered my pumpkin. I was hoping it would cover the whole thing, but no such luck. So good thing she sent me a whole bunch of pine cones. It's really funny. She sent me pine cones, acorns. And oh, what was the other thing? Oh, she sent me Rose Rocks too, which is, I guess, something that's found in Oklahoma. They were very cool. So I'll have to do something with those as well. But very thoughtful and very funny. I laughed really hard when I opened the box. So I'm going to cut about half of this pine cone. I think that's going to be enough to cover it and continue gluing these around, just doing one row at a time. Now, when I got to the very top of the pumpkin, um, it is kind of a steep turn to go on the top here. So I did have to be a little creative with how I did it. I'm going to keep all of the scales going the same way, but I'm only gluing it to the pumpkin. So they're kind of like sticking straight out, but enough where they're kind of covering all the orange. You can't really see any of the orange out there. And I'm having to kind of... Oh, overlap them, underlap them, like put them under the one next to it so it'll kind of make sense. And I got to about there. Now I want to do a pumpkin stem and I'm just going to make one out of Dollar Tree rope. I just cut like three or four inches of rope, kind of um, unwound the edge just a little bit, put some hot glue on the top of the pumpkin and laid it in there hoping to like try to fill in that space that's left in the pumpkin with the rope by hot gluing the strands down in there like that and then i am going to get a little bit more creative with that rope to make it look a little bit better but that is a good start now you will have strings of hot glue all over from all that hot gluing, but if you have a heat gun or a blow dryer, you can definitely clean that up. Now I did notice you can see a little bit of orange here. And so I just cut off some little bitty pieces of that rope and filled that in. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, cover the bottom. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna cover the bottom, but I had these extra pieces that I cut. So I thought I might as well. And this is how I did it. I had to kind of like leave like a triangular part open, um, just working those underneath, putting one in the middle and then going back and filling in those little triangular spots with another scale. And I really um, had just about the perfect amount of pinecone scales to pull this off. And I like that better because now if you picked it up to look at it because it's so cool, you'll notice it has a finished bottom as well. So then I take the little rope pumpkin stem and I'm unwinding the rope. Now it kind of comes apart into four pieces and I wanted to braid it. So I was like, yeah, this would be easier if I could braid it like in three um, strands. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of gather all of the rope together and then just kind of estimate a third of each. And then I'm just going to braid it like you would just braid hair. To kind of give it a fun take just because I wasn't really digging just the look of just the rope pumpkin stem. I braided it to here and then I'm just going to hold that close and kind of finish it off with hot glue so it will stay glued together right there. Once my hot glue dries I can trim off all the random little pieces 
and shape it up a little bit. And I think it looks kind of cool as a braided little pumpkin stem. Now, the only other thing I wanted to do was add a leaf to it. And I couldn't really find any leaves that I had that I really liked, but I really like this little green felt leaf and this little wood wreath from the Dollar Tree. It's like a little mini wreath. And so I'm gonna go ahead and borrow that leaf from that little wreath, because I think that's gonna be perfect. It has a hole in it already. So I just take some Dollar Tree twine and string that through and made it extra long so I could also tie this up. I'm just going to wrap that around our little pumpkin stem and tie that off. And then I'm gonna use that excess twine to just do a simple little bow just to make it look a little decorative at the top of our pumpkin. And this DIY will be complete. It was definitely time consuming, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's so cute and I think it's gonna look great on this tray for fall. So here it is, our little pine cone pumpkin. I think it turned out really cute. I'm totally loving that little leaf that we used on there. And look how beautiful all the little pine cone scales are covering the sides of the pumpkin. And I think it's gonna look great on this fall tray. I think this is gonna bring like a perfect amount of fall to my living room. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back here towards the back of the tray. And we have our first piece complete. Now for the second pumpkin, I wanted to do something a little different, but with natural elements. So we're gonna use one of these little foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And I just pop off the pumpkin stem. I wanna cover it with fall leaves. Now, most of you guys know I live in Florida and tropical area, there's no, yeah, we our leaves don't turn colors <laughs> or fall off the tree. So I have to use the ones from Dollar Tree. So I'm using these. These are the ones that half of them are like white and half of them kind of have more of a reddish, pinkish color in the middle of them. And a couple of you guys in my comments have been telling me that I can flatten out these Dollar Tree florals with my heat gun. And oh my goodness, you guys are so right. So easy to flatten out the wrinkles in these by just using the heat gun. So great tip if that bothers you with your Dollar Tree florals. Super easy little hack. And thank you for sharing that with me. Anytime you guys know any crafting secrets, be sure to... Um, head to my comment section and let, let a girl know. <laughs> so I'm going to use all of them. So um, it's going to take like eight leaves for the bottom half of the pumpkin and eight leaves for the top half of the pumpkin. So I have half and half. I have like the pure white ones and I have the ones that have kind of the orangish color. And so let me show you how I put it together. I'm going to use like the line marking the halfway of the pumpkin to kind of space out where I need to put these. And I'm pointing them tip down with the white leaves first. And as you can see, some of these are like really off center, but that's OK. I don't think you'll be able to notice. I also glue down the tips of the leaves so they don't stick out too much. And I also glued down the base. But I do want them to stick out a little bit so it'll be kind of obvious that they're fall leaves. Now I'm going to take the, the orangish ones and overlap them slightly. As you can see, they are bigger. They're gonna cover a little bit more of the pumpkin. So I can go a little bit higher with those and they're gonna be a little bit longer. I'm not gonna glue that one down yet because I want those to overlap the white ones to cover more of the pumpkin. I, you know, I have the white pumpkin. So if you see some of the openings like between the leaves, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's not gonna be real obvious. But if you had one of the colored foam pumpkin, pumpkins from Dollar Tree, you're probably gonna wanna paint it like a white or a more neutral color. Something's gonna blend in with your leaves. So I'm gonna do four of the white ones like evenly spaced out, gluing them all tip down. And then I will go back and finish the overlap of the ones with a little bit of the orange tint to them. So I also glue down each one of the individual leaf points just to make them, you know, shape them up a little bit. And now we can start with the orange leaves. I like these. I like these and I like the ones that are like really tannish. 
if you wanted to add some color, um, the blue ones or the purple ones, they have so many colors now, would be great too. Um, I was just at Dollar Tree today and they're starting to put out Christmas here a little bit at a time. It was also 10% off day, which I did not know. And so they gave me a coupon and then I got really excited and I went to the Dollar Tree Plus and they didn't have any coupons. So I didn't get so lucky there. <laughs> and that would have saved me more money because that place is more expensive. So this is how the bottom half looks with the all the tips pointing down with the white on the bottom with the orange, wish, orange ones overlapping. So I'm gonna need eight for the top. So I'm gonna have to prepare a few more leaves here and then we can cover the top part of this. I noticed that like the plastic is not perfect on these. So when I prepared each one of the leaves, I went in and took the little balls of plastic that were kind of where they're not supposed to be. You can kind of see there, just peeling those off, cleaning them up, and then giving them the quick iron with the heat gun. That is a fantastic tip. Now for the top, I was trying to decide if I was gonna line it up exactly like I did on the bottom with both points tipping down, but it actually turns out a little different here on the top and I'll show you how. So I'm gonna overlap the white on top of the orange one, um, same way, tip down. But when I go to do the orange ones, I'm actually going to have those go tip up and it covers more of the pumpkin, covers more of that white foam that I don't really want you to see. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the white ones first because I'm gonna be overlapping the orange on top of the white ones again. And so I just do one orange one on top or one white one on top of each orange one and just kind of spread those out in all four corners here of the pumpkin. And then we're going to decorate the top of this a little bit so I don't really have to worry about that open area on the top where you can see some of the foam. We will cover that when we decorate the top of the pumpkin. So this is how it would be if I like went like tip down on those, but see how much more coverage you can get by having it go tip up. You can cover almost all the white area there. So that's what we're going to do. Um, again, I just hot glue the base and then hot glue all the tips just to kind of keep it down. And you can kind of move your tips around a little bit here if you need to, to kind of cover up the white space um, on your pumpkin. Because the more coverage you get, the better. And we're just gonna glue all those back on. And then we are gonna make a little pumpkin stem, decorate the top of this a little bit. And I think that this little leaf pumpkin is gonna look really cute sitting next to that little pine cone pumpkin that we just DIY'd. So this was way less time consuming, really wasn't very hard at all. I'm always trying to find creative ways to cover these little foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree for y'all. And this is just another idea. You'll have to let me know in the comments. I'm thinking about starting Christmas videos. If you guys are interested in me starting Christmas videos yet, you will have to let me know. I feel like it's a little early, but I see other people are doing them already. So you'll have to let me know if you want to see Christmas DIYs soon. So I got them all glued on both the top half and the bottom half. The very bottom of it is not covered, but I think that's okay um, where the sticker is down there. And then for the pumpkin stem, I'm gonna use the little wood stems from Dollar Tree. I always try to get one that's a little bit bent, like this one, and, or you could use like three skinny ones altogether. I decided to use one that was bent. I just poked it down into the pumpkin and also added a little hot glue to make sure that it stays in place. Now I need to cover that like little exposed part of the foam there. So I thought some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree would be perfect for that. So I just pulled off some of that. We're going to wrap that around the pumpkin stem. I have a little bit too much. We're going to trim that down a little bit. And um, also kind of hot glue it down so it kind of like, you know, stays in place. And I don't think I'm going to add a leaf or anything to this. I think the leaves on the um, pumpkin are enough decor. And I really like the little wooden pumpkin stem and the Spanish moss at the top. This is how it turned out. 
I think it's pretty fun. Another like natural fall DIY. If you had real fall leaves in your yard, um, this would be a fun idea to craft with. And it would look even better than these Dollar Tree leaves. But I do like the colors of these. I think they look really nice together. So we're gonna sit that here on this little fall tray right next to our little pine cone pumpkin. And the next pumpkin is from the Dollar Tree. It's ceramic, but it looks like wood. So I think that's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be nice warm colors and it's gonna complement the other two pumpkins that we DIY'd really nicely. And the next item for our little fall tray, I picked up a little brown owl at the Dollar Tree. I think the colors are perfect on this one. He's, his paint job's pretty good. I don't think I really need to do anything to him. I think he's gonna go really nicely with all three of those little pumpkins. So we're gonna work him in right about here in between those two pumpkins that we DIY'd. And then look at this great filler that I found in the fall section at the dollar spot at Target for only $3. It is a bag full of brown and white spotted mushrooms and two different kinds of pine cones. So I thought these would all be great to use for filler on this fall tray. I was really excited to see the mushrooms. I think that is a fun little natural element. It's not actually natural but it is a representation of something natural right <laughs> so we're just going to kind of scatter those cute little mushrooms all around i have another mushroom diy coming up with the mushrooms from the dollar tree i absolutely love those as well we're going to kind of scatter those kind of make them going different directions kind of make it random and then it came with pine cones so we're going to use some of those as well for filler to start filling up our fall tray. I like that they gave a variety of two different kinds. So we can just kind of scatter those around. And I have another item that we're gonna use for filler too to make it like really full. It's this decorative fill that I also got at the Target dollar spot for $3. I've already used most of the pine cones out of this for another DIY, but it does have these like little green berries and these, they call these balls, but I think these are like some kind of representation of like a tree seed maybe. You guys know what these are called? If you do, let me know in the comments because I know I've seen these before. But I like the green. I think that's going to provide a fun little bit of color, but it's going to still kind of keep it neutral, right? No bright oranges or anything like that. And I'm going to scatter all of those little um, seeds all over. And I think they just provide the perfect amount of coverage on the bottom of the tray. Also, the perfect amount of color. So I just fill it all the way in. I think that is the last thing we're gonna need for this fall tray. I had a great time putting this together. Definitely the pine cone scale pumpkin was the most consuming, time consuming part, but it turned out really fun. And I really like the little leaf pumpkin as well as all the items that we found there from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot. So let me give you a look around my little fall tray. I thought this was really cute. So this fall tray DIY is also one of the DIYs today and the 20 fall DIYs. Now up next, I'm gonna do a fall Kirkland's dupe. This one was like a white textured pumpkin canvas art print, regularly $39.99. Um, from Kirkland's and I thought we could DIY this with one of the Dollar Tree burlap canvases because it's already kind of that brownish color, right? So um, they kind of had a wood frame on theirs and for that I thought we could use some of the five gallon paint stirrers from Walmart. So I'm just going to use my football pumpkin. Isn't that adorable? I picked that up at Dollar Tree the other day um, just for a stencil. But, you know, a pumpkin shape is so easy. Um, you can probably figure this out if you don't have anything. But I had this handy and it was the right size. So I'm just going to use that for a stencil and then use a Sharpie. I'm going to have mine slightly go off the bottom and the side like the original. And since I have a... Um, 
you know, rectangular canvas instead of a square, I chose a long pumpkin. I thought that would look good. Now to make the textures, I'm just gonna use hot glue. So right where I put my Sharpie line, I'm gonna go in with kind of my um, fine tip hot glue gun here and just start sketching that out. And this is gonna provide us that texture that you see in the original. So I just do the border, do a couple lines right here for the little pumpkin stem. And then I'm gonna do like, I think I can fit like four little pumpkin lines in, kind of arched a little bit to go along the sides of where the pumpkin would be there. So I do each side and then I do another two here in the middle. And that is mainly the texture that I saw in our inspiration piece. And once we paint all that, um, it's gonna provide us that cool texture. Now, I thought that looked pretty good, but I thought maybe I should make like the um, outside of the pumpkin a little bit thicker. So I did go back in there with another coat of hot glue on that. And you wanna clean up any like hot glue strands or anything like that that you might have because when you go to paint it, you're gonna be able to see it. But I think, I've, I think that looks pretty good and I think we can start painting it, but we just have to let the hot glue set up. I'm just burning off those strands and I have an air conditioner in my garage, so I wouldn't put it in front of the air conditioner for a minute, like a window unit, and it's set right up. Now I'm just using regular ivory acrylic paint and we are gonna paint this. See how that great texture turns out? And I kind of like the imperfect nature of the hot glue. It's gonna make it look even more handcrafted and unique. And I'm just gonna go in and paint that. I did use switch to a smaller brush when I'm kind of going around the edges. I don't wanna go too crazy there. But basically I wanna do a nice thick coat of the ivory in there. I thought at first that I might have to do like spackle to do like a spackle texture to kind of get this look. But I was really impressed with how well this burlap painted. If you put a good coat of paint on there, it really does seal up the burlap and you don't see all those little burlap holes um, if you just gave like a thin coat of paint on there. So I just went over the whole thing. I noticed that my hot glue um, kind of was looked a little bit grayish. So I do go in there and touch that up a little bit until I get a nice ivory coat. I dried it and then I just go back in any areas where I kind of had any holes or any areas that were a little bit thin, I just added another touch of paint. And that's basically it for the canvas part. Just a little bit of hot glue and some acrylic paint and one of these little burlap canvases, which I am obsessed with. Every time I see these, I try to grab a stack. Um, because they are great for coastal crafting, but look at this, they're great for fall crafting as well. So I'm just going over everything, making sure it is good and white, and I really love how that turned out. Now, the five gallon um, paint stirs from Walmart, they're like a couple dollars, you get three of them, and one can be for each side, and then this one, I'm gonna cut it twice to this length, for the top and the bottom, and we're just gonna make a really easy little chunky frame. I just cut left to right, side to side for the top and the bottom. I'll fill the rest of the space in when I go to do um, the side pieces. I was trying to decide if I wanted it boxy or kind of in the middle, and I decided I wanted it in the middle, so I just do a band of hot glue on the middle of my paint stick, and I'm gonna stick that directly to my canvas. I decided to attach it this way because I didn't want any like real visible nails or anything like that, which you could do. Um, but I noticed the sides of the canvas are a little bumpy. And if I use hot glue, I can kind of mold the frame to go tight up against the burlap as I can get. And it actually turned out pretty well. So I got my top piece on and we're gonna do the same thing here with the bottom. Just gluing it about halfway. And be careful, like I thought that my paint was dry, but the paint on the back of the canvas was wet <laughs> and I made me get it on the frame. So I got to clean that up real quick. It definitely went through the holes a little bit. And now we just need two side pieces for our frame. I wanted it to be kind of constructed like this so you could hang it or you can sit it. I'm going to use it like kind of as a shelf sitter artwork for my home. 
So I cut down a side piece. I didn't cut it down great though, and it fit better on the other side. So we're gonna go with that. So same thing, we're just gonna glue it on. This time I put glue on each end of the top frame and then glue along the sides. That way I can kind of glue everything together in one straight shot. Just trying to keep it as square as I can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it looks kind of square and it stands properly, I'm totally gonna be fine with it. So one more paint stick. And one of y'all told me that you guys get like paint sticks um, from, I think Home Depot or Lowe's and it must be the smaller ones. I don't know. They sounded like they're really cheap. I have never bought paint sticks from there before, but maybe I'll have to check that out because I always love these large ones um, from Walmart. And if they're cheaper than the Dollar Tree rulers, then maybe I need to stock up on some because I love using them for crafting. So I've got it all glued on there. And this DIY is complete. I love it. It turned out so cute. And I think it looks pretty close to the original. So here is what we were trying to dupe. This white textured pumpkin art print from Kirkland's for $39.99. And here is our Dollar Tree version. With a $1.25 canvas plus a couple dollars for the paint sticks really easy to DIY. And I love the simplicity of this. If you did like a neutral fall, this is going to go so nicely with your decor. And isn't it cute? I love kind of the imperfect nature of it. It's just kind of a work of art. Okay, I love this sign from the Dollar Tree. It says live simply and be grateful. The colors are perfect because it has like a, a picture of burlap around the edges, has like a bluish pumpkin here in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and remove the little burlap bow. I'm going to save that for later. And I thought we could add some details from the Dollar Tree to kind of make this more of a 3D sign, bump everything out and make it even prettier. So I got one of the little wood pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and we're going to make a pumpkin that kind of sticks out more 3D towards the front. That's going to kind of shield the one in the back. I kind of want to do it the same color. I don't really have this color though. So I'm mixing some cloudless, a tiny bit of green and some ivory to try to get that like minty green color. And kind of wiping off the excess with a baby wipe just to give it a very light stain. I also want to do some shading there for like the creases of the pumpkin. And so I added a little bit more of um like a darker a blue to it the turquoise just to give it a little bit more color distressing that with a baby wipe as well to kind of blend it in and i end up adding to this a little later on but that's what we have so far with it just a very light stain and then i thought we could just top the pumpkin and cover up the hanger at the top with that burlap ribbon that was already on the sign now to build it out a little bit, add some fun touches. We're gonna start with these little burlap um, oak leaves from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna remove the wire off of these. And we can attach one of these to each side. It's gonna be a fun little fall leaf. And then again, these are the little berry picks from the fall section at the Dollar Tree in ivory. And they're all kind of bundled together. So I want them to be kind of smaller bundles so that I can kind of piece those together and put them right where I want them. But I don't want like a huge mass sticking out. I want it to be a little bit flatter, um, the little pieces that I can use to decorate the sign. And this sign is already so cute, but adding all the little touches to it to kind of make it look more 3D really brought it out and made it really fun. Just trying to figure out how I could bump the pumpkin out a little bit so it can be bumped out more than everything else. I think that would be cute. And then we'll have the bow attached to it just like that. Now for a little greenery, I'm gonna use the lamb's ear from Dollar Tree again. I've pretty much went through all of my lamb's ear from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna have to stock up on this again. I love it, I use it all the time. And I think I have a plan. I just need something to work as a spacer. So I'm gonna use one of these little wood puzzle pieces from the Dollar Tree. You won't be able to see it back there, but it's gonna lift up my pumpkin enough so that I can glue some greenery and things underneath of it. So I first start with the lamb's ear. 
And I'm going to kind of cover up the sunflowers on there and a lot of the um, greenery that's on there, but some of it will be peeking out from behind these little burlap leaves on the side. And I just kind of overlap those on top of the lamb's ear going out in the same directions. And then I really didn't think that you could see the sections on this. So I add a little bit more ivory distressing on the sections, this time going lighter instead of darker to see if that could make it look a little bit more 3D. And then I'm going to glue that to the star and gluing the star down to the pumpkin. It's almost the same size as the pumpkin that was on the sign. And then to cover the little hole on top, we're using that same bow that was on the pumpkin before. I think it's gonna be perfect. I'm just gonna kind of shape it and trim it to make it look a little better and hot glue it right there on top of the little ornament hole there. Now for the little berries, I'm gonna fill in that section there at the bottom to cover up the flowers and stuff like that and just kind of make it look really nice and soft. I'm also going to add some more of the lamb's ear. So I'm going to pull off some more pieces and we're going to kind of layer all of these together, hot gluing everything down as well. With a little pumpkin bumped out, it's great because you can just glue the little stems for the greenery right underneath. And it kind of covers up any of the things that you don't want to see. And now it's just a matter of attaching all of the berries. I'm gonna kind of keep them all on the bottom. And I just attach this with hot glue until we fill in this section here at the bottom. And this is just a fun way to take a little $1.25 sign from Dollar Tree and just take it up a notch, make it so much more special. I want a little bit more lamb's ear, so I'm gonna do a couple more pieces, kind of layering it underneath the burlap leaves, kind of sticking out to the sides. And I love how all these colors work together. Absolutely beautiful. And this will be great because you can add this up all the way through Thanksgiving. Now I told you I was gonna to add to this. I still kind of wanted more of a 3D look to this pumpkin. And so I decided to use some of this cloudless paint, the, just the plain blue, and do just a little bit more contour there. And I really like that kind of two-tone look. That definitely helped. And this is how it turned out. Live simply and be grateful. That is great advice. And I'm so glad that they knew how to spell grateful. <laughs> because my other fall sign from them this year, they misspelled that word. But this is how it turned out. And I really liked adding the second color to that little pumpkin. I think it has so much more character now. I really love how it turned out. Now our next one is also going to be a Kirkland's fall dupe. So Kirkland's Home has the Scarecrow double-sided pillow, regularly $39.99, and I thought we could make a Dollar Tree version. Ours is going to be on the smaller side um, because I wanted to try to use one of these burlap bags from Dollar Tree for the front and the back. The reason I chose this instead of the burlap at Dollar Tree is because it's got this plastic coating. It's a synthetic burlap, so it doesn't fray. It's super easy to cut and it's really easy to work with. So even though it's gonna be a little bit smaller pillow, I think it's gonna work perfect in my entryway. And since this is kind of has a plastic coating on it, if you wanted to use this outside, I think that it would totally hold up. Basically, I want all the fabric off of the front and the back of the bag. So I'm just cutting along the seam there because it did kind of have the little side panels on the bag that I don't really need. So I don't need the handle or the seam up here. I'm just gonna try to get as much as that synthetic burlap clean as I can get in the shape of a rectangle. I just kind of want to use every single bit of it. And then we can do a little scarecrow head pillow like the original from Kirkland's. I thought that I was going to get super straight lines with my little rotary blade, but I did not really. But I do have this cutting mat, so I'm going to kind of use that to try to straighten this up a little bit and give me some cleaner edges so I'll have a nice square pillow. 
Once I get this one good and square, then I can just use this one as a template for the other piece. So one will be the front with the scarecrow face. I'm not gonna make mine double-sided. I'm just gonna do one side with the face. So I'm just gonna lay that on top of here. And then I can use that for reference when cutting down the second one. I just kind of want to get the sides and the handle and all that kind of stuff out of my way just to make it a little bit easier to cut. And once I get that all down, then I can just use the original for reference to cut it down. Now, I love painting this like synthetic burlap. It's super easy to paint. And so I think we're going to be able to do like a very similar design in the to the original Scarecrow. So I'm going to kind of use that for reference and try to freehand this. Now, it had kind of like a hat that kind of went sideways like this. My pillow is not super big, so I don't want my hat part to be very big because um, it doesn't really add too much to the design. And I'm going to make it that same kind of like yellowish honey color to kind of go with my fall to gore. So I use a paint marker in that color and then I go back in with this beautiful color and I'm just using a brush. That way I can kind of get in all of the fibers of the burlap, make it look like it is really painted in there. I've noticed that when you use the paint pens, you kind of get that dotted look because it doesn't really get in the holes of the synthetic burlap which is why you need a brush to kind of push it all down in there. And I just want a nice even coat for the hat. And they had like, I think, Happy Harvest on theirs. I don't have quite enough room for that, but I will add a word to that. Then I just use a black Sharpie and I draw on two oval eyes like the original Scarecrow. And that's kind of the effect that you get. It had like these little... Um, parts of the eyeball here. So I went ahead and sketched those out, but see how like dotted that looks. I tried to like switch it up to a paint pen, but I felt like it still did not give me great coverage. So I'm just gonna use a tiny brush from Dollar Tree, some black acrylic and go in there and paint it like I did the hat. And I think that's key. I think that makes it look a lot better. And with a tiny brush, you can't make too many mistakes on an eye, right? <laughs> And we're gonna do the face very similar to the one in the original because I thought it was super cute. Scarecrow, scarecrow faces are really easy to DIY. Now, I always like to have my scarecrow noses be like a little triangular shape. They did something really cute on the original where they made their nose look like a piece of candy corn. So I'm gonna emulate that since we're doing a dupe video. So I just sketch out that um, rectangular rounded shape, kind of like that, which is what I would normally give a, a scarecrow, right? But we're going to paint it to look like a piece of candy corn. So I do white at first. This little section here, I tried paint pen again, convinced I could use paint pen, just didn't like the look. So I went back in with a little bit of white acrylic to fill that in. Also, these little reflections here in the little scarecrow eyes. We're gonna paint those white as well. Then I'm gonna switch to orange. I think this is called jack-o'-lantern color for this part of the candy corn. And then switch back to our original color here that we used for the hat. And I think that kind of looks like a piece of candy corn. What do you think? And then the mouth was like a bunch of squiggles. So I just take a black Sharpie and do squiggles in the shape of a mouth. Can't really mess that up because there is no right way to do it. Then I am gonna do a paint pen for this part just cause it's so skinny. I can't really do this with a brush. So I sketch that out. And then I'm gonna do the little stitch marks all along the scarecrow mouth like the original. Then I'm gonna use that same paint pen to kind of outline the little candy corn nose, just to kind of make that pop a little bit. And I think he's looking really sweet. What do you guys think? Now the original one said like happy harvest. I only have room for like maybe one word on my pillow. So I chose harvest and I'm just using a white paint pen. And um, I'm just gonna do cursive handwriting, kind of like what they used and 
try to get it on here. I noticed that, you know, I painted it so much this gold color that it kind of wanted to soak in. It wasn't super white. And whatever you do, don't do that. What I did was when I was concentrating so hard on painting Harvest, I put my arm in the orange paint on his nose and it was not dry yet. And I got it all over my poor little scarecrow's face. But I was able to get most of it off. Now I go back in with another coat to kind of make this more visible up here because it really kind of faded all the way in. And... I went back with a third coat and it still kind of looked like the original like burlap color, but hey, at least you could read it now. So I think I'm happy with it. Now everything else is kind of outlined. So I thought I should outline the hat too. So I used my black paint pen just to do a nice straight line here, just to kind of make this look a little bit neater up here for the top of the scarecrow hat. And I think that's about all of the pieces of his design. And now we can start building a cute little fall pillow. I'm going to start at the top just by doing a bead of hot glue along the top and then measure that up here with the top piece and just kind of push that together. Make sure you don't burn yourself with the hot glue. Those little fingertip protectors from Dollar Tree always seem to disappear from my workbench. So I just got some new ones. Thank goodness, because I've burned myself way too much with hot glue. So if you get any hot glue sticking out or threads, you can always trim it up a little bit to make it look nicer. Then we're gonna go in and do a bead of hot glue along both sides working quickly so it doesn't set up. Then lay this back down, leaving the bottom of the pillow open so that we can stuff it. Now, I always like to save my old like bed pillows and stuff like that um, to use the polyfill for crafting because I'm always making pillows and stuff like that. And so that's what I'm using. And polyfill is just too expensive to purchase. I never purchase it. I always use old pillows. So I just pull it out. I kind of like to use smaller pieces because I don't really want any lumpy um, surfaces in my pillow. And I just kind of keep filling it until I get it nice and fat. I don't want it too full here at the bottom because I still need to close it, which is what I'm going to do with another bead of hot glue along the bottom and then just lay it flat and glue all of the fluff in there. Kind of looks like a sack pillow or something like that, which I guess it kind of is a bag pillow, but I think it turned out so cute. I'm gonna like display this in my entryway, like on my hall tree. It's just an adorable little fall pillow. I absolutely love the design. I think we got pretty close to the original, just maybe on a smaller scale. Isn't he cute? I love scarecrows. So let me show you the original that we were trying to dupe from Kirkland's. It was regularly $39.99. And it is, says, Happy Harvest, a cute little burlap scarecrow face. And here is our Dollar Tree version. So it cost $1.25 for the bag free fluff and just a little bit of paint to make this adorable face and hat. And I love him. He's so cute. I might have to make another one, maybe a different, maybe a girl one. That would be cute to go with him. I think it's really fun. Okay, the next item we're going to try to do from Kirkland's is an Autumn's Tree canvas art print, regularly $99.99, really large one. But I kind of took the idea and designed my own Autumn Tree art print. And it's the first time that I've ever taken a photo and made it into a painting. And I think it turned out really cool. So I designed it to be a square and I designed it to fit in perfectly to one of these little square signs from Dollar Tree. Um, theirs was like an unframed canvas, but I always like all of my artwork to be framed. So this has a little frame edge along the sides. So I think it's going to be perfect. Again, I don't like the hanger that really comes on these, so I just replace that with a little bit of twine using some hot glue to make sure it feeds through and knotting it off on the front. Now I will share this printable of this fall scene that I designed. I took a fall picture and using Canva, I converted it into a painting and I'm kind of obsessed with how well it turned out. This frame is about eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches is what I designed. 
the image to be, but my printer will not do borderless at this size. So I am gonna have a slight border here on the top and the bottom, but that's okay. It's just gonna make it fit nicely. And I just kind of trim my two sides down slightly until it fits in my frame. And this was such an easy DIY. I'm just gonna put a coat of Mod Podge down. And again, I printed that printable out on cardstock just because I like working with that better with Mod Podge. And I get my cardstock in the big reams at Target. It's actually a good time to buy it this time of year. School supplies are on sale. Um, and then I just lay it right here on top of the Mod Podge, gluing it down, no wrinkles or anything, which is one reason why I love the cardstock. And I will definitely share this free printable with you as well. I absolutely love how it turned out. It was a picture like of a fall road with some people walking down it. When I turned it into a painting, you can barely tell that there's people on it anymore, but I think it looks really cool. Now, once I got it dry, I went over the top of it with more Mod Podge kind of working horizontally. I really want that brush stroke because that texture is gonna kind of go with the look of a painting, which is what I wanted to go for. So easy. I think one coat of Mod Podge is all that's gonna need to seal that. We're gonna leave the frame as is. And here's my little fall scene of autumn trees, a little different than the original, but I think I kind of captured the same kind of feel of an autumn tree. Um, painting. So there, the one we were trying to do for $99.99. And here is my Dollar Tree version with my free printable that I designed. Isn't that cool? I'm going to have to make more things look like paintings because I think that's so cool. And it really reminds me of an autumn road. <laughs> Okay, let's get started on another DIY. We're gonna use one of these little glass globe jars from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna do a pumpkin. I've seen lots of people make pumpkins out of these, but I thought it would be try to fun, be fun to make one with natural elements inside. So we're gonna take these pine cones and fill it all the way up. I wanted to see how many pine cones I could get in there because I wanted it to be nice and full but I don't really want them wiggling around or anything like that. And I found like a perfect amount to fit in there. And so the pumpkin, you know, you'll be able to see in it will have pine cones inside. So I think that'll be a fun touch. Now to make like the different sections of the pumpkin, I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree twine. Um, I do go ahead and burn the fuzzies off of it just to make sure that it's not too wild looking. And then we're gonna start by wrapping it around. So the bottom of the jar will be the top of the pumpkin and tying that off right on top. Now I left it going around the open bottom, which is gonna help keep all those pine cones in there, even though I don't think they're really going anywhere. I think I got it pretty good and full. So we also hot glued that to the center to kind of keep it straight. And then we're gonna have to do that with the twine two more times to give it the little segments of a pumpkin. So I just wrap it around, tie it off on top again. I'm tying it on the top because I'm gonna put a pumpkin stem and stuff there, so I'll be able to hide all that later. And then we're gonna do it again here with the third piece. Now I wanted to make sure that it all stayed together. So I decided to tie this one. So they'll all meet in the center at the bottom. Everything's gonna stay even. Then wrap it around and tie it off and trim off the excess. I also hot glued them together in the center to make sure that they stayed in place as well. So that's what we have so far for our little pine cone pumpkin. I've seen people make these with like twinkly lights inside and it looks really pretty, but I wanted to try something different. So I wanted to try the pine cone version because I've never made one of these before. Now to cover the top of it, um, instead of Spanish moss, we're gonna use that brown moss they have right now at Dollar Tree. It's kind of really messy, but I like the color for, for, for fall. I think it looks really cool. And since that had that like flat bottom on it, that's now my top. I want to cover most of that with the moss to kind of hide the fact that it's not like domed at the top of the pumpkin like it should be. And then we're going to use one of those wood stems from the Dollar Tree again. Just hot gluing that right on the top. Again, I like to use one that's a little bit bent like that kind of give me the feel of a pumpkin stem. 
and it's looking pretty good. I'm thinking maybe just a few more little items to add to this. Um, Paula also sent me some pine cones. So we're going to use some of those that she sent to decorate the top of this. I'm just going to hot glue a pine cone in place. And I had some of those um, little green berries left over from that Target Dollar Spot kit. So I thought it'd be fun to add a few berries here to the top just to give me a little bit of color. And just trying to figure out exactly how I want those on there. And I just trim that down and just glue the little plastic stem down inside that brown moss. I don't want to go too crazy with the decorations, but I did want it to have like a little curly tendril. So I'm going to use some of that wired jute from Dollar Tree. I cut off a piece and wrap that around a pen and hot glue the ends because this stuff loves to come off the wire. You definitely don't want to work with it too much because it will fall apart on you. So I glued the other end so I could cut that end as well to kind of give me a um, cleaner little wire jute. I definitely want it to stay on if I can. And then I'm just going to wrap that around the little pumpkin stem like that. And then I'm going to use a little bit more of that brown moss just to cover up the top of that so you can't really see that part. You can only see the little curly tendril like standing up. So a little bit more moss over here as well. I thought it needed a little bit more. And um, I added one more of those green berries and this DIY is complete. Our little glass um, glow pumpkin full of pine cones. I love all the natural elements, the wood stem, um, the acorn, the pine cones, and the twine I think gives it a natural element as well. So a really easy little pumpkin DIY for a natural fall. And I would love to see what you've been crafting. Be sure to share your DIYs with me like I share mine with you. Be sure to join my private Facebook group. It's always linked in the description of my YouTube video. I would love it if you joined us over there. It's a private Facebook group. Only members can see everything and everything is everybody is so creative over there. I'm going to use one of these little standard wood crate boxes from the Dollar Tree at Crafter Square, and we're going to make a really cute little sunflower planter box out of the, this. So I don't want like the stain to be super dark. So I mixed water together with Antique Wax by Waverly to give me a lighter stain. And um, staining one of these little wood boxes from the Dollar Tree is even easier than painting um, because you can kind of get in um, all the little creases and everything there pretty easily and just wipe all the excess off with a paper towel. I did notice certain sides were staining like maybe a little bit different color. So on those sides, I did go over it with another coat. I'm also just gonna do the bottom just to kind of make it look more like a finished piece. And I'm not necessarily going to do like the inside, but I do do around the edges where you might see in there. And then I did the bottom just because I dripped some in there anyway. Now to decorate our little planter box, they have these great stencils this year in the fall section at Dollar Tree. They're little self-adhesive stencils and they come in all different kinds of patterns. This one had sunflowers on it as well as other fall theme too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint that cool fall pattern on the front. I was trying to decide if I should just leave it all one piece and do it and I decided I was just going to cut mine. It's just going to make it easier. So I cut that stencil down to the front there and they're actually just stickers. So basically you guys just have to peel and stick. The only challenging part is getting it started. And I'm going to have like that stained wood background and then we're going to go over the top of it with some ivory acrylic paint. And I'm going to use a little stencil dauber from the Dollar Tree. And the stencils work pretty good. I did find I had to kind of hold this one on a little bit, but it may be because I didn't really have my um, Antique Wax by Waverly like super dry before I put it on there. But it did a pretty good job. So here are the results. Isn't that a pretty pattern? Um, I went back and forth about whether to put a word on there and I end up actually doing it. 
I also do want my little um, planter box to have little feet. So I'm going to use some of these little wood beads. These are from like uh, the wood beads, the square wood beads from the Dollar Tree. And I had some extra ones. So I thought the fact that they were cube shape would work great for little feet. And so I just stain them with that antique wax by Waverly too. So they'll match with the planter box. Super easy. All I have to do is glue one of the little feet into each corner of our little mini planter box. Now this DIY would be great for anywhere. It'd be great for a tear tray because it's small, on a shelf, in a kitchen, in an office, pretty much anywhere. At first I was gonna put Hello Autumn on the front, but I kind of felt like it was covering up too much of my cute stencil pattern. So I do end up putting a word on there, but for the now I decided to wait. Now the flowers that we're gonna use to fill this, I picked up two fall flower picks from Dollar Tree. They have some really pretty stuff this year. Their flowers have gotten so much more high end. So I'm gonna use just some Dollar Tree foam. Um, I have to cut one piece to get it to fit. I basically just wanna fill the box there so I can arrange it. And then a little bit of um, Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree to cover the foam so you can't see in the planter box. And now it's a matter of just arranging our sunflowers in there. I think it's going to be so pretty. I picked up two of these. These had like sunflowers, pumpkins, pine cones, um, really um, pretty. Um, every time I go to Dollar Tree, I went to two Dollar Trees today. I find myself picking up more um, fall florals because they're just so nice. Their flowers used to be so cheap there. And um, since they've raised their prices, I'm really noticing a difference in quality. So I'm gonna do some sunflowers in this. I'm pretty much gonna use everything because I just want like a fall theme. And so I thought maybe like a sunflower on each side, maybe some of the taller pieces here in the back. And I'm trying to save all the greenery on them as well. Just pushing those up before I cut them. A pumpkin and a pine cone. And I do kind of rearrange these to get it exactly how I wanted. I was thinking I wanted three um, sunflowers, um, but it took a little bit of arranging before I was happy with it. So I just kind of move stuff around and add to it. I'm not going to use everything on these two picks, but I'm going to use a lot of it. I had so much fun putting these sunflower DIYs together today. I think they all turned out so pretty. The sunflower is such a bright flower for fall and it can kind of work with all those fall colors, right? So I finally found a spot for my third sunflower there. And then I chose the hello fall word and the little um, wood fall words that they have at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna paint it this golden sunset color. It's gonna go nice, I think, with the sunflowers. And it's not too late, I'm gonna glue it here on the front of our little planter box. It doesn't cover up as much as the Hello Autumn one. And so here it is, our little mini sunflower planter box. So cute and easy, just a couple of items from the Dollar Tree, and I think it turned out so sweet. Isn't that stencil pattern really pretty? I picked up the fall stencils last year, so I'm really hoping that they bring them back again this year because they were so beautiful. I really don't think any of my stores have fall completely set, so I'm still holding out hope. Okay, the next DIY, check out this cool fall sign I found at Dollar Tree the other day. I think this is new this year, I've never seen it before. And it's got like four pumpkins next to each other and I thought, oh, this is so cute. We could totally remake this and make this look even better, even though it's already cute, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is use heat to remove the leaf and all the raffia bows on here. And then I want to remove all of those letters because it spells out fall and I want my pumpkins to spell out fall too. And so great source of letters. You do have to be really careful removing these though. You know, Dollar Tree used to make things barely glued on. You could just pop stuff off. I really had to work with a, a spatula and heat to get these off without damaging them. And then it kind of chewed up like the pumpkins underneath, but that's okay because we can always DIY the back of the side. So again, carefully get started on these. They're not super thick wood. They're like more like a thick cardboard. So you definitely have to be careful when you're removing these if you want to reuse them. 
I found that if I get my little, um, that's like a cake decorator from the Dollar Tree that I'm using there. I found if I got that hot enough, I could kind of slide it through like butter there, the, the hot glue that they used. Uh, the hardest part was probably just getting started and trying not to take too much paper off the pumpkin below it. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. Kind of chewed up. And I don't really want it even for my back to look like that so I'm kind of tearing off any of the excess fabric and I'm going to cover that to try to make that look a little bit better. Now I think it will look better as standing sign since it's like four pumpkins sitting side by side so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hanger from the back and we're going to use the back for our front anyway so we kind of have to clean it up and it's a way better surface to work on than the other side that's all chewed up from the letters. Just a matter of getting all the staples out. It does leave a few holes, but we're going to cover this. So as long as I can get it flat, we can get it pretty good to go. And I think it's a great sign to work with. Now, I told you I didn't like the back being like that. So to cover it, I'm actually just going to use some of this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter which one. And I'm just going to kind of line that up. Um, and right here on the back of it with the Sharpie. I don't really care about the pumpkin stem parts. I'm kind of avoiding those and um, just tracing that out. And I can just peel, um, cut, peel and stick this on the back. It's gonna give me a way more finished project. And since I avoided the stems, it made cutting this out a lot easier. So it's just a giant sticker, peel and stick and the back of our project is gonna look way better. Because just because just you're using a Dollar Tree sign doesn't mean you want it to look bad on the back. <laughs> so I think that solves our problem. And now we can start decorating the front of these. I wanted them all to be different. I wanted to incorporate, you know, my blue theme. I wanted to incorporate the burlap theme as well. So we're going to do two pumpkins in bluish color. And I'm going to use one of these placemats from the Dollar Tree. And then two in burlap. So... Kind of trying to find the sections. They have little square designs on there. Trying to avoid that if I can. And I'm just going to turn my sign over and use that as a stencil to cut out the um, placemat in this beautiful like mint green blue color. And I just use a Sharpie to draw that out. So easy to cut this. I love crafting with these. I think they're so pretty. I always try to pick these up. And these are just placemats from the kitchen section at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to cut like right inside that line. Doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as you can get to the size of the pumpkin that you're covering. Like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I didn't want the same colors to be next to each other. So I'm going to skip a pumpkin and then do the third pumpkin too. And this one's a little trickier, but you can kind of see um, where it starts and stops on the bottom. See how it's like down a little bit? So that kind of shows you more where you need to go than the top because <laughs> they all slightly overlap each other a little bit. So you kind of have to remember that too. If you're going to cover yours with fabric, you could always paint them different colors too. I think that would be really cute. I'm just doing my best to cut that out since it's kind of hard to know exactly um, where the top is going to be, but I can kind of estimate from the size of the bottom and going straight up. So those are our two bluish pumpkins. And then we're going to use Dollar Tree burlap bags for the other two. I love crafting with this because it's coated on the back. It's so easy to cut, doesn't fray. So I think it's going to be great for the other two pumpkins. So I'm going to turn it this way for the small pumpkin. It's going to fit in there perfectly. And again, I have to kind of just guess. <laughs> exactly where this starts and stops, but I can get some clues here by drawing on the borders. And this one I kind of have to guess, you know, exactly where the sides are. But if you cut down here and you go straight to where the bottom cuts off, you can kind of guess where the pumpkin should be. And the burlap ones don't have to be perfect because the blue ones are going to kind of overlap them. It goes all the way down to my seam on this one. 
I left it on so I could kind of trim it later. And then I actually pulled the thread out because I really kind of needed every bit of that fabric. And that is that pumpkin. Now the other pumpkin that I need to cover is even taller. So um, I'm gonna use that same bag, the other half of it, but it's a little, I'm not gonna work that way, but if I turn it sideways, um, it's gonna be long enough. So again, I'm just gonna flip that over, use the pumpkin as a template, trace that and cut that burlap bag down. So you can see why I love crafting with this. I'm always telling everyone, if you see these, pick them up. They're in odd locations. Sometimes they're in the crafter square. Sometimes they're in like home decor. Sometimes they're like in like frames and stuff like that. I found them all over the store. <laughs> But see how they're going to be, the burlap ones are going to be kind of under the bluish ones. And so at first I thought hot glue might be a good option for this. And this was probably the only time that hot glue gun couldn't keep up with my crafting. It's because it couldn't really produce enough hot glue. Because once I did that one, then I tried to do the one next to it and it didn't really have enough hot glue. And then I didn't really like the fact that it was leaving little ridges. So my camera died there. So what you missed is that I switched to this, the tacky glue from Dollar Tree. <laughs> so, cause I had trouble on that first blue one with the hot glue. And I said, you know what? If I use tacky glue, it's gonna go so much better. And it did. So I wouldn't recommend hot glue on that. And I'm just using a baby wipe to kind of smooth that out. But you can see that I glued the burlap ones down first. And then I did like the blue placemats on top. Now for the stems, I'm going to use Dollar Tree twine. I love a good twine pumpkin stem. And they just have these simple square um, stems on there. And I think that's fine because there's so many of them. I just hot glue that to the back. And then I just wrap that around until we get to the very top. Cut that and glue it super easy. I thought about adding little curly pumpkin tendrils to them, but I decided not to just because there were so many of them. I thought it might get a little bit cumbersome. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on the other three pumpkin stems. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching today's video. My last three videos here on YouTube have not done well, and I don't know if it's the time of year or if the algorithm is changing or what YouTube is doing, but I don't appreciate it. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. Anytime you can watch a video all the way through, it helps my channel so much. Also, if you like my videos, um, share them, comment on them. All those things really help. I know I like a lot of my viewers watch on TV and I do as well. So I understand that it's hard to do that. But if you ever get a chance to remember to do it on the computer or your phone, I would really appreciate the interaction. So we're going to finish off this last one. And I think they look pretty good so far. I'm just going to do a quick um, burning of the fuzzies off the pumpkin stems. And then we can uh, decorate this with the fall letters. I did a pretty good job of getting them off without damaging them at all. And so now we just need to paint them. I'm going to paint them just in this like parchment, like ivory color. And I just do a thin coat on each one of them. Kind of with them to like look like white wood. I don't mind if they're a little bit distressed, but kind of going over a dark color on these. I don't want them to look too dark. So you just do a thin coat, give them a quick dry. And I do that a couple of times to get really good coverage on these. I want these to kind of pop against our little pumpkins that we DIY'd. And then we're also going to convert that pumpkin sign into a standing sign because I think that makes a little bit more sense. So it took about three coats of acrylic to get these good and white. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any of that original color sh shining through. Okay, it's time to put it all together. I think it looks so cute. So we're going to just go ahead and lay our letters here on our pumpkins. I think they look cute up a little bit more than that, like right about there. And just hot glue these on. 
Now my board was, my sign was a little bit bowed and the letters were a little bit bowed. And so I was having to like kind of hold them down with the hot glue to make sure that everything is glued on good. And I do kind of get the, the bowing out of the sign um, before I hang it, which is good, <laughs> or make it into a standing sign, which is good, I guess. But I did definitely have to hold those letters down a little bit more than normal just because of the bowing. And I fixed it just by bending it a little bit. And then I'm gonna use some of these Jenga blocks from Five Below. I talk about these all the time. I buy them every year, but I just bought some new ones there the other day. So I'm gonna show you exactly what the box looks like. You get 63 of these at Five Below and they're only $12 and they are perfect for crafting with, especially if you wanna make a really quick little stand. Not sponsored, but they should be giving me some free ones because I've been using these for years. <laughs> And so I think two is gonna be enough. What I'm gonna do is just hot glue these onto the back. You wanna make sure that you don't go all the way to the bottom because you want the sign to be able to slightly tilt backwards. Um, that way it will stay in place. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing here on the second one. And I love them because they're so durable and um, they make just perfect stands. And there's so many things you can do with them nice and heavy. And so this is how it looks. I did want a leaf decoration before there was kind of a leaf de decoration on there, but I wanted to switch it up with burlap. So I'm going to use that last burlap leaf that we had from the reef earlier. And all I did was just hot glue it there right on the front of the pumpkin. And this is how it turned out. Our little burlap fall pumpkins. I thought it was really cute before, but I think it's even like amazing now. I love this DIY. I hope you do too. Isn't all the texture on that so pretty? Just like, you know, three things from the Dollar Tree. Now I designed this autumn flower market design. I will share my free printable with you in the description below. And I printed it out on eight and a half by 11, just regular size cardstock, which is almost exactly the right size to this Dollar Tree sign. It just required a little bit of trimming to get it to fit down inside that frame. And I guess I've never really realized that that was exactly the same size as a sheet of paper. So I'm just trimming it down in little pieces. Um, some of you guys have asked in the comments, why I don't use paper cutter? And I really do have a paper cutter. I just don't know where it is. I think it's buried somewhere on my workbench out in the garage. I need to find it though, because it would make my life easier, right? So I do a fairly thick coat of Mod Podge all over that back sign and just lay my cardstock down right on top. One reason I like to a Mod Podge cardstock is since it's nice and thick, you don't get any wrinkles or anything like that. So I got it in there, I dried it, and then I just went over the top of it with more Mod Podge. What a quick, easy little sunflower sign. Um, I love the idea of an autumn flower market. I thought we could take it up a notch though. Let's add some more sunflowers to it. So I found this fall floral pick and this is from the Dollar Tree. It has like, um, I'm going to use like the sunflower on there and some of the greenery and just kind of put that in the corner there. That's kind of not really have anything in it. Um, I do always remove like the hanger that I don't need on those Dollar Tree signs because you can kind of see them if you're not going to be hanging with that one. So just kind of dismantling this pick to kind of see what I wanted to use out of it. I really like those little like branches. And I really like the fall leaves. So I'm going to use the two branches, just hot gluing those right in the corner, as well as the orange fall leaves, kind of peeking out over it. And then we can just top it off with that sunflower. And it just really kind of brought the sign to life. You could totally do it without the addition of the flowers, but it added a little something, I think. And I will share that free printable with you below. Super easy way to make a fall DIY. And I think it turned out really beautiful. And really, it only took me a few minutes to put this together. And there's sunflowers on there. So we got to love that. And I love that watercolor print. It's so beautiful. 
So here is our little autumn flower market sign. And I love DIYing with those blank signs from the Dollar Tree. Now this I found at Dollar Tree and I don't have to do anything to it. It's a little sunflower pumpkin. It's even got like a little gourd, some fall greenery sticking up. But you know what? I think it's perfect and I think this is going to go great with the sunflower display. So I thought I would show it to you anyway. Because it's sunflower and it's for fall. This would be really cute on a tear tray as well for fall. Or it's kind of not too small. You could just kind of sit this around with your fall decor. And I kind of just threw that in there for a bonus because I thought it was really cute. Hey guys, have you subscribed to my channel yet? My analytics are telling me that about 65% of you guys are not subscribed. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. The next fall DIY, what I wanted to make is a really simple wreath to go with this beautiful welcome fall sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. And so to do that, I'm going to use one of these brass wreath rings from Dollar Tree. The largest one I think will be great. And I thought it would be fun to do just a simple little wreath to hang around it. See how it fits in there pretty well. There's still lots of room to decorate the wreath area. And it's going to kind of make it, you know, I don't know if it's, you could hang it at your front door. I think I'm going to hang mine in my entryway. But what I want to make the wreath out of is these little burlap leaves from Dollar Tree. So they come on a wire. And I wasn't sure if I was going to use the wire to attach it to the wreath, but I decided I kind of like them better without it. And so they're pretty easy just to pop these off. They're just kind of like hot glued on there. And sometimes they just fall off on their own. I um, picked up two packages of these. Um, there's five in a package, and I think I used a total of nine on this wreath. I am just laying them out, overlapping them slightly, kind of all going the same direction. And then it's just a matter of attaching those on there. Um, I thought hot glue might seep through, but it actually worked pretty well. So that's what we're going to do is hot glue. And we're just going to do one at a time. And I just kind of do like the main section of the leaf like that. And then um, I'm working in this direction, overlapping just that like little last piece of the leaf. They have two different kinds of these leaves. They have this one and then they have like, I guess the maple leaf, which is kind of a larger one. I think this one works a little bit better, um, but I would probably be cute the other way too. They also have um, different colors of these and hopefully they have them again this year. My store still doesn't have like really any of the craft supplies. The only things I've really seen are like the home decor things and maybe a little bit of other stuff, but my store, my, my store closest to my house doesn't have any fall yet. They're killing me. <laughs> so I think that looks really cool. And now it's just a way to try to find a way to attach the sign to the wreath. So what I did was I just cut the hanger in half and I'm going to use that existing twine that's on the sign and just kind of put that underneath of a leaf there, the tip of it and just tie a knot. And, um, at the bottom of that same leaf, I'm going to do the same thing here with the other side. And just tie that on there. You might check to make sure that it is hanging kind of like equal distance and adjust your knots if needed. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess twine. This was just a really easy way to attach it. I am going to make a hanger for it too. Um, I was trying to decide if I liked it like that or if I wanted a bow and I decided I wanted a bow. So this is Easter ribbon. I always pick this up every year because it's like the perfect color of beachy blue. And since there's blue pumpkins in there, I'm definitely going to go with the blue. A lot of the DIYs today are going to be a lot about burlap and a little bit about blue. So I'm going to make a super easy bow. All I did was measure out a tail, two loops on each side and then a second layer of loops and then I just need another tail. So it's gonna be just a very easy ribbon because it's the same on both sides so no twisting involved. Then you just take a zip tie right in the middle. Don't be afraid, I know bows can be intimidating but they're really not that bad. Just kind of pinch it in the middle 
and pull your zip tie tight. And then you just have to pull both of your tails down to the same side. And this is a wired ribbon from Dollar Tree. So it's gonna be really easy to shape this and kind of make it look nice. So I thought that would look good at the top. It's gonna to bring out the blue and some of the pumpkins. It's gonna add like an entryway feel. And I also just dovetail both edges at the same time, um, trying to even them up a little bit. Now to attach that to the sign, I'm just taking some Dollar Tree twine, wrapping that around that same middle leaf that we um, kind of tied the ends to, tying the bow off on there like that, and then wrapping it around I'm going to tie it on the back and then I'm going to use that same twine to make a simple little hanger for this. But honestly, if you're just going to hang it on a nail, you might be able to just hang it with the wreath form. But I had it there, so why not? So I just knotted that a simple little loop hanger at the top. And I think that looks so cute. Now I wanted something to like finish the bow on the top. So I got it all shaped up and I thought it needed a pumpkin. And I picked up these little um, clip pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and they're the perfect shade of orange, very light. I thought about just clipping it on there because it has like a little clip on the bottom, but I kind of wanted it to be like facing me and not like on its side. And so I am just going to pull the little clip out of the bottom and I thought we would just cut this pumpkin in half. That way it would fit great on the bow. I tried using a putty knife for this and it was a little bit more difficult than you would think. I switched to a um, one of those pool noodle cutters <laughs> that worked a little bit better. But I kind of wanted to leave the stem on there, but I wanted to get most of that half of the pumpkin. I think that looks pretty good. I just need to clean it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to hot glue that on. You gotta be quick because that foam in there will definitely melt, but you can hot glue it. You just have to work fast. And glue that onto the bow. And I, this was such an easy DIY. That sign is so beautiful. It doesn't have any glitter on it. So that made me so happy. And this is how it turned out. A little welcome fall wreath and sign. Isn't it cute? And it was just so easy to put together. And this is how it turned out. I love um, the little blue pumpkins kind of mixed with the oranges. And there's like acorns and stuff on that sign too. Super cute. And the little leaf reef was just so easy to put together. Isn't it cute? I'm a big fan. Okay, and next DIY, I'm kind of obsessed with these wood slices from Dollar Tree, if you can't tell. This is like the oval one. I want to make it into a little owl, um, but I want it to be like uh, vertical. So I don't really need the hangers to be on the side. So I'm going to carefully remove those. I'm not going to go after the staples. Sometimes when I do, it like totally splits open the little wood slice. But I thought we could make a, would the wood slice actually look like an owl using some of the burlap leaves and burlap flowers from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I do is just loop um, some twine to make a little hanger for the back. I'm gonna use my staple gun to staple that on there so we have a nice thick piece of wood. And then flowers for owl eyes. I thought maybe we could do that with some of these little burlap flowers from the Dollar Tree. I love these things. I think they're so cool. And then for all of the feathers on the owl, I thought we could use these little burlap leaves. They come in like tan and um, ivory color and they come in two different sizes. And we're just gonna just piece those together. Now for the eyes on mine, I chose tan uh, burlap flowers for each eye. I think they're gonna be about the perfect size. I don't use the little plastic double-sided tape that they come with. I'm just gonna hot glue mine on. And then for the body of the owl, I thought I'd switch it up and do like the ivory burlap by switching up the different sizes and shapes to do like little owl scales, feather scales down the front. So like this row, I can fit about three of the smaller ones. And they're super easy to attach with a little bit of hot glue. This DIY was really easy too, and it turned out so fun. I think this would actually be really fun for like a Christmas ornament too or just a fall hanging for somewhere that's kind of small. 
So I switched it up and did a row of like two of the larger ones. And then I'm going to go back and do three of the smaller ones. And as you can see, I'm kind of just overlapping them as I go. It'd probably be a little bit easier to start on the bottom with that one. And another one here on the bottom. Then I thought we could use like the um, tan or the brown ones to do like little wings coming down the side of the owl, kind of like that. And I have different sizes and that's fine. I can just kind of mix that up. And I just hot glue those to the sides, kind of overlapping the sides, sticking out a little bit like a wing would. And I kind of had this owl vision in my head. I really didn't know how it was going to turn out. But I really like it. I think it's really fun and sweet. So this is definitely another version of the burlap owl that you can do on a smaller scale. So I'm going to use some of those little leaves for the little ear tufts on this one as well. I thought I'd switch it up and do the ivory since the eyes are the brownish colors. And so I just hot glue the little ear tufts and then hot glue each one of the little flowers on for the owl eyes. Now I wanted like the pupil part of the eyes to be dark. So I'm just going to use a black paint pen and go in and just paint the center part of each one of the burlap flowers black. So it'll kind of pop out and look like an eye. Now I decided I wanted a little bit more of the burlap leaves here to fill out the bottom here. I trimmed one down just because I kind of needed some smaller ones. And just hot gluing that, I wanted to fill up the entire like wood slice. And then I decided I also wanted two more on the sides to kind of make the wings go all the way up. So I just did one more of the small one on each side. And this little owl DIY is looking really cute. The only thing he needs is a little owl beak. So again, I'm going to use one of those little orange burlap leaves from the Dollar Tree and just cut down a triangular beak for this little guy and hot glue it on with one end right underneath the eyes. And he is complete. I think he's really precious. Wouldn't this make like a really cute like Christmas ornament too? Because I love owls for winter too. But I think he turned out really cute. Here is a close up of our little burlap owl wood slice. And every time I see those wood slices, I am picking them up because I love them. There's so many things that you can do with them. And they have such a cool texture with the bark around the sides. Isn't he sweet? I think he's really fun. Now let's make another fall Kirkland's dupe. Regularly $19.99 at Kirkland's. It is adorable. And I thought we could do a Dollar Tree version really easily. Now they have a book stack for fall. It looks like this. It's a little plain. It's not too bad though. And so we are just going to use again, one of those burlap bags from the Dollar Tree. This is half of one that I have left over from another craft project because you guys know I craft with it all the time. I love it. And I thought we could cover the top, front and bottom with this bag. And it's going to give us that same burlap feel from the original. And we can even do gold lettering for the books to give it that same feel. So I just cut out the front panel of this. Again, I just want a rectangle of the synthetic burlap. And then I just need to cut it down to size, a strip that's going to cover the bottom, the side, and the top there. So I was kind of thinking how I want to do it. I covered every surface except for the back, maybe because the back was just cardboard already. Um, and it's kind of supposed to be book pages back there. We can't really see it back there, so it doesn't matter. So I just use an ink pen and draw out the bottom. And then as you can see, I just flip it as I go. So I get one long piece that we can use for all of the books. Now, if you wanted to use this to cover like actual books that would be super cute as well I, in the original it kind of looked like a book stack like this but maybe a little fancier one so i just cut that down to size and then we can just attach this all in one piece i will cut it later to make it look like individual books but i'm just going to start right here on the top just by lining it up like that with the excess going on the front 
I just do a layer of Mod Podge. Even though that has that plastic coating, you can use Mod Podge. It does take a little bit extra time to dry though um, for the plastic on there. And then I'm just going to line it right up like this. Now, since it is a rather thick burlap, I didn't think that you'd really be able to see the writing on here. So I went ahead and did Mod Podge first and then laid this down and smoothed that out. When I realized that you could still kind of read thankful and blessed and stuff like that through there. And I kind of realized that when I was kind of creasing it and I'm going to add new titles to it. And I didn't know if you would be able to see that. It kind of bothered me. So I was at a step where I could just pull it back up, wipe off the Mod Podge, and then disguise the writing on there a little bit by just using a little bit of white paint. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to mask it. Do a coat of white all over the front. And as you can see, the Mod Podge on that plastic just stayed wet for me. So <laughs> that'll help. But once I get it dry, I did add a little bit to the books itself. Because I want each one of these to be glued down to each book. Because we are going to cut those in just a moment. And I'm covering the bottom of my book sack. I mean, you probably wouldn't need to, but I kind of wanted that feel that the book wrapper went all the way around the book, kind of like the original. So I Mod Podge that to the bottom, pulling everything as tight as I can to it and let that dry. Then I go back in with a razor blade and I just cut out um, in that little seam between each one. And I kind of go back in there with a Cricut weeder, really try to emphasize that I felt like you still couldn't really see that there were separate books. So while my Mod Podge had a little bit of play in there, I was able to kind of rearrange it a little bit so you could see like a slight gap between each book. And I liked that look a little bit better. So now it's just a matter of making book titles. I'm gonna use my Cricut. It looks like they're about one inch wide. And I am going to share my Cricut file for this if you want to recreate. And I'm just going to use some gold vinyl that I had um, in one of those like variety packs of like 12 by 12 vinyl off Amazon. And I probably should have chose the foil setting. I don't think I realized really that this was like a gold foil, which I guess makes sense because it's metallic, right? But if you don't cut it like super good when you're using a foil like if I would have used the foil setting it probably wouldn't have been this hard to weed because <laughs> as you can see I was struggling but I was also determined that I was not going to recut this <laughs> so if you make any mistakes and your letters come up as long as you get them back down on that original sheet get them lined up properly you won't have any trouble. It could have also been that that was a little bit of a fancier font because this one really didn't give me much trouble at all. I did the same titles that were on theirs, except I modified this last one a little bit because there said like, leaves are falling, autumn is calling, and there is no way I was gonna weed letters that small. Um, no way. <laughs> And it was like so much on there that I didn't think you'd really be able to, you know, read it either. So I have enough trouble with this size weeding. Um, I think this is probably my limit. And we got them all three on my paper transfer paper. I'll just cut that down into strips. I get that paper transfer paper on Amazon. It's always linked in my Amazon shop below. And I'm going to use that to start transferring these on here. I'm going to do them kind of in the same order. Fall is my favorite on the top book. And I love that gold um, vinyl. I will definitely have to get some more of this because it turned out so cool. And I would have never thought to put the gold on the burlap like this if I hadn't seen the original that we're duping from Kirkland's. So the second one said Autumn Skies. And then the last one I just said leaves are falling and check it out. I think it turned out so cute. I don't want to take away from that beautiful um, shimmer of the gold. So I'm not going to seal it down, but I think it's going to stay on there pretty good. That vinyl seemed pretty sticky. And here was our original tan burlap fall book stack, regularly $19.99 at Kirkland's. And then our D 
DIY Dollar Tree book stack. Isn't it beautiful? I love the burlap covering the books. I don't know why I never thought to use burlap for that. And I love the subtle colors. Again, super cute for like a neutral fall decor. And I'll try to share the SVG files for that if you want to try to recreate with your Cricut at home. Okay, our next DIY is going to be a little coastal makeover on one of these little acorn wooden boxes from the Dollar Tree. So to start with, I'm giving it like a light blue finish on the back of it. I'm also going to do that like on the sides, basically anywhere you're going to be able to see this. I do want to do like a, you know, like um, a special touch on the front, but I kind of wanted it to have like a light blue background. So I do the sides, I do the base of it. And, you know, sometimes these little boxes can be a little bit difficult to DIY. They're super fun to make though, because you can put flowers in them. They're great for tear trays and stuff like that, but you can also just use them for decor. So I do the insides as well, just because I was afraid you might be able to see them. Basically all the surfaces except for the very front, which I have a different plan for. I want to use some of this removable wallpaper from Dollar Tree in this great tropical print on the front. So I am just cutting a piece down to size just to cover like the acorn part here and not the cap. So just kind of using the cutout on the front of the acorn as a reference and cutting it right down to size. I love crafting with these because they are literally peel and stick. I did do the edges in light blue, just in case I don't get it on there perfectly, but I just peel and stick it like a sticker and it looks very tropical and fun for fall. Now for the acorn cap, I wanted it to be textured. And so I'm gonna use some of these little jeweled stickers that come like on the mesh sheets from the Dollar Tree to make the acorn cap. So I just cut off a rectangle, stick it directly to it because it's kind of an odd shape that I need to cut out here. And I'm gonna use like the little cutout in there for reference. I just need to get in there and cut a like little arch line here. I thought it would be easier just to go ahead and attach it like that. And then I can trim down the top of the acorn cap as well. And it has that great bumpy texture that I think of when I think of the top of an acorn. And I use like a gold color, but I'm going to kind of paint that. So I don't think it really matters what color you go with with that. But doesn't that look really cool? I love the texture on that. Now to paint it, I'm just going in with like an ivory color first and just kind of pushing it down in between all the little jewels just to give myself a like base coat of this whitish color. Then once I get it all painted, I'm going to go over the top of it and distress it with some antique wax by Waverly to make it really look like the top of an acorn. So I just do a couple of coats until I think it gets dark enough, wiping off the excess. And I think this turned out really cute. Look at that great texture on the little acorn cap. And I will share a free printable of this design because I know Dollar Tree switched up their wallpaper and got rid of my very favorite design, which is this one. Now the next DIY, I want to use one of the little Dollar Tree wood trucks. I have a fall one from a yard stake, but it doesn't matter which one you get. They have so many options. I basically just wanted the shape. Now I want to make a little, little blue truck truck bed display. So I'm cutting the truck bed away from the cab of the truck. And then I want to use one of those little Dollar Tree wood boxes for the bed of the truck. And it doesn't matter again which season you have because you can always DIY this and make it your own. If you want to leave it like they have some pretty cute ones, especially this year. I just saw some there today. Um, if you want to leave it like the way it came, um, by all means, go for it. I'm going to customize mine and try to make mine look coastal, a little blue truck. So I'm cutting off the pumpkins that kind of overlapped from the side just to give me a clean cab to the truck. 
And that's going to be attached like that with the bed of the truck is going to be the little wooden box with the tailgate at the end. So it's just a matter of DIYing this. I tried to peel the paper off because it was a little loose, but no such luck. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover that with just some contact paper from the Dollar Tree using a sanding sponge to cut off the excess just so this has a finished back and looks a little bit better. Now I am going to go in and start painting this. I wanted it to be a little blue truck, so I use Agave Chalk Paint by Waverly, a couple of coats there on the cab, and then I'm also going to use that same color on this one. Instead of um, finishing the back, I decided just to go over the front of it. So to kind of get rid of the writing on there, I did a coat of white first and then follow that up with a coat, a couple coats of agave for my little blue truck. Now it's time to draw all the features back on. If you don't remember where they're at, sometimes I like to leave the other side unfinished, but I kind of already covered mine up. So windshield is pretty easy. So I just drew mine on with a white paint pen and followed that up with a tan paint pen. And then I'm just coloring in the windshield a little bit with a silver paint pen. Try to kind of make it look like it is a little bit shiny. Maybe try to give it the appearance of glass. And it was kind of a decorate it until you're happy with it on this. And I just kind of played with the colors. If I didn't like something, I kind of just added to it, which I kind of outlined it again there with the gold. And now we can go in and do the tailgate of the truck. So for the bumper, I kind of needed like a like a light gray or a silver. I decided to mix a couple of colors to give me a very light gray. Just painting that on for the bumper and then touching up the tires in black. I love the coastal farmhouse vibe. So I gave a light distress to everything with a little ivory paint and a chunky brush. And then you know how like there's words on the back of the tailgate. I'm going to have mine say farm fresh. One of those little wooden signs from the Dollar Tree. Going to go ahead and distress the cab of my truck as well. So they kind of have the same finish. And then I kind of need to draw the features here on the tailgate too. So on the other, I did like, you know, the gold. Um, so I do gold lines there on the sides, kind of distressing those as well, because I kind of forgot to paint that part on there already. And then for the bed of the truck, we're going to have it say farm fresh because we're going to fill this little blue truck up with pumpkins for fall. So I paint the little farm fresh word ivory as well. So it stands out nicely against the blue tailgate here of the truck. And I love those little wood cutout words for fall. They're so cute. Now I decided I did need a little bit more paint on the tailgate. I kind of wanted a white and gold to kind of make that stand out a little bit more. And then I also distressed my farm fresh with a little bit of the agave blue that we used on the bed of the truck to kind of make it have that same distressed vibe. Now it's time to give a makeover for the bed of the truck. The wood box that I had was one with the star cutouts. So they have lots of different kinds. I don't want you to be able to see that part. And one of my viewers told me that you could cover that up with masking tape. So I gave it a whirl and it worked out really well. So I just covered the inside and the outside with masking tape. And then you can just paint right over that part. It's the perfect width when it is like sideways for the bed of the truck on my particular sign. So I just go all over and paint the inside of the bed of the truck, that same agave blue color. I love little blue trucks. I've done lots of little blue truck DIYs, and this is definitely one of my favorites. It turned out really cute. So I painted like all of the exposed edges there, anywhere that you might be able to see. And now it's time to put this together. I need to attach the cab of the truck to the bed. I kind of wanted to make a little brace. So I also cut down like a popsicle stick to add to that because I didn't know how well this was going to stick on there. So I glued that to the cab of the truck and then I can glue the other half of it to the bed of the truck. And that did seem to make it a little bit sturdier. 
Now, if you had two of the little truck signs, it would be even better because you could not cut the back one and then you could have the tires and it would sit level with the tires on the front, the tires on the back, and only use half of it for the front. But I only had one, so I was kind of making do. Now, since I distressed everything else, I decided to distress the sides of the bed of the truck and the inside with the ivory paint as well, just to kind of keep it consistent. Wiping off any excess with a baby wipe. I love distressing everything. I love that vibe. Now it's time to attach like the farm fresh to the bed of the truck. It has like a little line kind of between the words. So it makes it a perfect place to glue it on. And then I can glue it on to the bed of the truck kind of like that. So I just put hot glue on the tray. And sit that right on there. Now, I don't have any back tires, so I'm going to kind of have to make a stand for that. And I decided to do that with some wood blocks. These are the Jenga blocks that from Five Below that you see me use all the time. I just glued like um, three of them together. It made it the perfect height here to make a little stand here on the back. You could kind of do the same thing with some Dollar Tree um, Jenga blocks as well, but it's probably going to take a few more of them. Now, even though I tried to get it level, it still kind of wasn't and I wanted it to be level. So I'm going to use a popsicle stick. This is one of the jumbo popsicle sticks, and I'm just going to cut down a couple pieces to kind of attach to the tires, kind of replacing the tires, just making my truck a little bit taller, just kind of trying to problem solve. So I'm just going to paint those black and attach those to the front of the sign, and they're going to be like little feet here to make my tires just a little bit longer. And since everything else was distressed, I went ahead and distressed the tires as well with a little bit of ivory too. And now it's just a matter of attaching those to the front of the truck. So made it a little bit longer. And again, if you had two of the truck signs, you probably wouldn't have to worry about that at all. And it is complete. The only thing that I noticed there is the top of the tailgate kind of needed painting. So I just painted that blue and distressing it with some ivory as well to make it all blend in. But otherwise, I think this is complete. It just needs pumpkins. Now you can use this for any season. Um, it would be great for any kind of produce. Any You could use it for summer. It could be seasonal. Lots of different fruit choices. You could use it for Christmas trees as well. Now I kind of liked outlining it with white. So I just kind of use a brush with some white on it and kind of just go around and outline everything, including the windshield. I just thought it made all of the features pop just a little bit more. Now these are the pumpkins we're gonna use from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones on the clips. So I'm just gonna pop them off and load up the back of the truck but I'm not a big fan of the color of these Dollar Tree pumpkins. And so, you know what? You can always paint them if you're not happy with them. I'm just using some pumpkin color chalk paint. I like that color way better. And since they're made out of foam, I'm just putting them on some Dollar Tree skewers, painting those and sticking them in some foam to dry. Quick, easy way to paint those and you're gonna make those cheap little pumpkins look way better. And I did two coats of paint on all of those, reattaching all of the little pumpkin stems and piling them in the back of our little blue truck. And it's complete. Here's our little farm fresh little blue truck full of pumpkins. This DIY was so fun to make and I just love how it turned out. I think it's so cute. Adorable. And I love the colors as well. And you've made it to the final reveal for all 20 of our fall DIYs. I hope that you got lots of crafting inspiration today. Be sure to let me know which one of the DIYs was your favorite. Leave it in the comments down below. I always love reading all of your comments. And you can find me at Crafty Beach on YouTube on all social media. Enjoy the final reveal.
Hold your hand in my hand, looking at the sunset. Man, you're looking good tonight. I wanna kiss you before the sun goes down. It's what you do. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of today's video. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all my Crafty Beach Bum members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Janae Farrington, Julie Miller, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C, Live Another Day, Tracy Wooldridge, Marin Christensen, Debbie Middleton, Vicki Connors, Adrian Brolt, Deborah Caldwell, Red Mama, and Tammy Muir. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. Thank you so much for being members. If you would like to become a Crafty Beach Fund member, all you have to do is hit the join button next to today's video. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos here on YouTube. And it is $4.99 a month and you're free to cancel at any time. Would you like more fall DIYs? Well, I've got you covered. Check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, everyone, happy crafting.